Hi, I'm Mr. Simons, and in this video, we're going to talk about market equilibrium. So what we've done is we've looked at demand and we've looked at supply but we've really looked at them in isolation, so just on their own. But when we look at economics, we need to bring them together. When we have a market, there are buyers, and those are the ones that demand the goods or services. And then there are the sellers, the ones that supply the goods or services. So what we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna bring demand and supply together on the same graph. So if you haven't seen the demand or supply content, that would be a really great place to start and there'll be links in the description to all of those relevant videos. So what we'll do is we'll start off by drawing the curves and bring them together and show the relationship between them as they create this magical situation called market equilibrium. Okay, let's get into it. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna construct our market equilibrium graph. So what we'll do is we'll just label our axes as we would do if we were just drawing um, demand and supply separately. So we say, okay, well, we know that price sits on this side and we know that quantity sits on this side and we know that that point represents zero. So it's looking very similar to what we've got um, in previous times and we just included demand or supply. So let's include supply. So our supply curve is upward sloping as we would expect given that the higher the price, the more that firms are willing to supply because they can make more revenue. So if we're thinking about supply, if we were just considering it by itself, then what we can say is that this quantity axis would represent quantity supplied. Now that's not a nine, it's like a lowercase q. So that's an uppercase q, a lowercase q. So if again, if we were looking at supply and we're considering this whole axis along here, that that represents quantity supplied. We don't have demand yet. So what we'll do is we'll include demand. So here we have our demand curve and our demand curve is downward sloping as we would expect because generally the higher the price, the lower the quantity demanded the less goods and services that people want. If we are just considering the demand curve, this quantity axis would represent quantity demanded. And again, that's not a nine, it's a lowercase q. So that's quantity demanded and that's quantity supplied. But if we're putting these on the same curve, then we're no longer considering them in isolation. Let's say that we take this point here, that the supply and demand curves intersect at this point here. And let's call this point A. So that's that intersection point. So if I um, come down to this situation here, what I'm thinking about is, okay, well, this intersection point, yes, this represents quantity supplied, right? But it also represents quantity demanded because they're both occurring at that point. That again, when they intersect and I match it up to the curve, both of those curves are occurring at this point. And what I can also say is that there isn't a different price here for demand and supply at that level. That in fact, if I go across here, that I've got the same price for both of them. So there's something that's quite special about point A that we should really make note of. So what we can say is that Point A represents a point called market equilibrium, right? Equilibrium. And equilibrium has that kind of equal stem in it. And so you're thinking about at equilibrium, equilibrium occurs when quantity demanded is equal to quantity supplied. And we can see that this occurs at point A. So what we can say is that if point A is where things are equal, that this is the price at equilibrium, where quantity demanded equals quantity supplied. And we don't have to label these points individually anymore. We can just say that this is quantity equilibrium, right? So we've got PE and we've got QE here. So what we can say is that at point A, we have price equilibrium and we have quantity equilibrium. So we very much combined demand and supply on that same graph to create market equilibrium. And so I've just highlighted there that market equilibrium is occurring 
at point A. In different videos, we'll see what happens when we don't get equilibrium, which does occur. But for now, we're just focusing on this idea that we can get market equilibrium and it is occurring at point A. Okay, so let's have a think about what happened in that graph. So we put the demand curve and the supply curve together and we got price equilibrium and quantity equilibrium. So if we're thinking about setting up this as a kind of equation or a relationship, that what we've got on one side is we've got market demand and market supply. So they're feeding into this experience. So we've got market demand and market supply. Something happens in the middle. And then what happens is we get price equilibrium and quantity equilibrium. So there's something magical that's happening in this process that enables us to go from demand and supply to equilibrium price and quantity. So the thing that happens in the middle of this equation, for want of a better term, or relationship, I don't know, you can pick your own term, maybe put it in the comments so I can re-record this video and do it properly. In the middle, what happens is what's known as the price mechanism. So on one side, demand and supply, go into this price mechanism, and then we get the equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. So you might be sitting there wondering, what the hell is this price mechanism anyway? So let's have a look at that right now. So the price mechanism is the process by which demand and supply interact to determine market price and market quantity. So what happens is that demand and then supply operating in this market, they intersect and then we get equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. That that is the idea of the price mechanism, that the interaction of demand and supply create that equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity. So what do we mean by this term equilibrium? Equilibrium occurs when the quantity demanded equals the quantity supplied. What we're saying is that the quantity demanded in the market, the amount of goods and services that consumers want, well, that is exactly equal to the goods and services that firms produce. So if we're looking at a more formal definition of equilibrium to uh, further along our economic study, that what we might say is something like, equilibrium is achieved or attained when consumer demand equals firm supply. In economics, we say that at equilibrium, the market clears. So what we're saying is that if a market clears, if I clear out or if something is cleared, it's sort of gone, disappeared, right? So if a market clears, it means that all the goods and services that are available are sold. All the goods and services that are available to be bought by consumers are in fact bought. So at equilibrium, demand equals supply, which means that the market clears, which means that if I went into the supermarket, the shelves would be empty. Okay, so in this video, we've started our process of trying to understand market equilibrium. And the main thing to remember is that when we put demand and supply together, where, whoa. The main thing to remember is that when we put demand and supply together and the curves intersect, at that point where they intersect, that gives us where quantity demanded equals quantity supply. Because if you draw a line straight down from that point, you can see that quantity demanded and quantity supplied are that same point down there on the quantity axis. And from there, we get the equilibrium price in the market. And at equilibrium, very important, the market clears. All of the goods and services are sold because the price is right. It is exactly the right price that suppliers will create or produce the exact number of goods or services that are then purchased by consumers. There's nothing left over and we are at market equilibrium. Any questions or comments, please put them in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching.